हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू सी द कंसेप्ट ऑफ एम बी ओ एम बी ओ मीन्स मैनेजमेंट बाय ऑब्जेक्टिव दिस कंसेप्ट इज बीन कॉइंट बाय पीटर ड्रकर सो इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू सी वॉट इज द स्ट्रैटेजी ऑफ एम बी ओ एंड वॉट इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ एम बी ओ सो लेट इज स्टार्ट विथ टूडेज लेक्चर बिफोर वी talk about the concept of mbo or management by objectives i would like to tell uh, or i'd like to introduce who is peter drucker uh, students peter drucker is a well known management thinker and uh, is known as management guru so management guru means a, a person who is having a thorough knowledge about management he is such a well known personality in the world of management that it was suppose that the company uh, which is having a management consultant as uh, uh, peter drucker as a management consultant it's supposed to be the successful company or its success of any company was measured on the basis that their management consultant is peter drucker so that famous uh, drucker was and uh, as i said that he is called as uh, management guru and also he is being called as father of modern management so students we are learning the subject modern management so before uh, in earlier lectures we have seen the importance of modern management the meaning the changing environment in modern management so from henceforth in further lectures we are going to see which people or which management thinkers have contributed in modern management and the first name which comes in our mind is peter drucker who has coined or who has come up with the concept like mbo which has become very famous wherever you go i mean mbo is a concept which is being um, has become so popular and therefore peter drucker has also become so very popular not only because of this concept but um, i would like to give a brief introduction about uh, peter drucker um, so uh, peter drucker was born in 1909 in vienna austria uh, and he belonged to a dutch family Uh, then after his graduation he came to usa in 1973 and uh, from 1950 onwards he worked as a professor of management at graduate business school of new york university so by profession he was a uh, professor actually and later on he started um, consulting the organizations uh, he worked as a management consultant then um, he is he has received this is very important he has received 16 honorary doctorates from various american belgian english japanese and swiss universities so his work was so very well recognized by all the countries all over the world that he has been given 16 honorary doctorates doctorates means phd's okay so 16 universities have um, uh, given him uh, doctorate and uh in 2002 the then us president george w bush presented him the nation's highest civilian honor so students he was also been honored uh by george bush uh with the highest civilian honor in 2002 then along with this uh, he authored or he has written many insightful books he wrote extensively not only on management actually peter drucker's name is associated with only name management but actually he has written books on various uh, disciplines uh, like economics history religion education philosophy art and uh, and he's as i said that he is called as father of modern management so uh consistently his work or he wrote about the importance of management to business organizations and society at large he believed that management is so very important in every business organization and for the society as a whole then uh, he repeatedly preached the philosophy of mbo which we are going to learn in this topic the philosophy of management by objectives and self control and he believed in creative management and uh, he he explained the role of management and importance in his famous book the practice of management uh, in which he has i would like to highlight a few uh, things which he has mentioned in the practice of management book he explains that manager is dynamic life giving element in every business life giving we always say 
finance or money is the life blood of business but what peter drucker feels is that manager is a life giving element in every business and um uh, what he thinks is that drucker has explained in his book how management can remove poverty that means uh, he believed that if you manage your resources very well then any country can remove its poverty so he he commented that developing countries are not underdeveloped but they are undermanaged therefore he feels that management is the mover and development is the consequence and therefore he believes that developing countries should manage themselves or manage their resources in such a way it, with the help of management they can remove their poverty and can be on the path of development this is what drucker used to feel then um among the various thoughts and views which are expressed by drucker mbo and self control are widely discussed and accepted concepts all over the world then uh, according to drucker he thinks that the only one definition of business is to create a customer okay so uh, there are some comments or some sentences of drucker which are very important for business organization uh which when i uh, one of them which i discussed is it now was to create a customer that is the only definition of business finished okay so if you want to create a customer you will go for good production good qualitative product you will give that product at a reasonable price you will attract the customer you will go for heavy advertisement and publicity isn't it so creation of customer is the only one definition of business this is what drucker thinks then uh in case coming towards uh, uh our concept of mbo uh this this concept was as i said it was developed by drucker in 1954 and what is this concept now the name itself signifies mbo mbo means what management by objectives that means you have to manage your whole organization with the help of objectives that means you will have to set objectives for your individuals for your organization as a whole for each of the department for each of the team isn't it and then you will have to strive hard to see to it that your objectives are accomplished right you have achieved your objectives in the way in which you were desired to achieve them isn't it so uh, the main part the uh, first uh, second point is over here is that accomplishment of objectives through participation of all the concerned people now in case of mbo we are going to see what is the process and what is the cycle of mbo but before uh, going for that while explaining the concept when we are talking about achievement of objectives here participation of those people who are in the process of achieving the objectives is very important right so here two words are very important accomplishment and participation right so participation of whose participation is required of those people who are concerned with the achievement of objectives isn't it so that is the important uh, core part of this uh, mbo then uh, in continuation with the second point itself the third point goes this way like participative and democratic style of management okay so as i said participative uh, means it requires participation of all the people in the organization who are concerned with the accomplishment of objectives okay and democratic style of management now this participative and democratic it means it's a leadership style we are talking about leadership style so how your leader must be or how your manager must be he must believe in participation of his subordinates he must be having a democratic style you have learned democratic style of management in your first year under um, styles of leadership right so in democratic style a leader believes that i should give equal chance to each of the subordinate to express his opinion okay and so equal chance and equal opportunity is being given and in democracy he believes that whatever decision has to be taken it is to be taken after considering the majority of the opinion okay so majority wins that kind of uh, thinking a democratic leader has 
right so mbo believes in participative and democratic style because unless and until those people who are concerned with the accomplishment of objective unless and until they participate actively in this process then it is of uh, it's of no use isn't it so to make you, your mbo process more effective you need participative and democratic style okay then moving towards the third point the principle behind mbo is to make sure that everybody in the organization has clear understanding of aims objectives of the organization and their roles and responsibilities in achieving those objective again in continuation with the third point as i said participative or participation of those concerned people is very important so in mbo your manager has to make it sure that whatever objectives are set for individuals for organization for department your individuals or your employees have clear understanding of those objectives they should understand what is my objective what i am supposed to do and in how much time i am going to i am supposed to do the task isn't it and what is my role or what is my responsibility or what what kind of responsibility is being shouldered upon me to achieve that objective that should be very clear that means none of your employees should be uh, con in confused state of mind where he should think that how uh, what kind of role i'm supposed to play here isn't it so this hat should be this this should be very uh, made very clear that what is my role in achieving the objectives okay so these are the four important points in mbo okay then uh, we are going to see the definition of mbo given by george odion uh, he says mbo is the process whereby the superior and subordinate managers of an organization jointly define its common goals now here it is very important jointly define now as i said participative style of leadership is uh, useful over here or it is expected over here where superior and subordinate both of them your manager and your assistant both of them will together sit together have joint meetings together and they will set their common goals right then moving towards and the next part of definition says that define each individual's major areas of responsibility in terms of results expected of him and use these measures as guide for operating the unit and assessing the contribution of each of its members right that means define individuals major areas of responsibility that means here again every individual must know what kind of responsibility i am shouldered with and what is my role what role is being assigned by my management to me in achieving the objectives right and how i am going to contribute towards the achievement of objective this has to be very clear okay then uh what is mbo strategy in short what is the concept of mbo that is being given over here so the first is that all individuals within the organization are assigned with set of objectives which they are supposed to attain in specific period of time so students here not only objectives are set for individuals or uh, groups but they are also being given specific time within which they are supposed to achieve that so unless and until you give some kind of deadline you know people don't work so deadline has to be given specific period of time then second is that objectives are set after considering the capacity and ability of individual now this is very 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 important okay so what what does it say capacity and ability of individual so how the objectives are set in definition we saw that whenever you are deciding your common goals or objectives your superior and subordinates they both are sitting together right so they are discussing about what should be your objective now this objective is set after considering the capacity and the ability of the individual okay now why this ability and capacity has to be checked because if you set the objective which is beyond the ability and the capacity of individual what will happen when the objectives are too difficult if they are beyond your individual's capacity then your individual or your employee would be under pressure 
right so this would affect his work he'll neither be able to achieve the objective and nor he'll be very comfortable in doing the work isn't it so his ability and capacity his skill his qualification his earlier performance has to be considered and then only the objectives are to be set this is what the second point says then the third one is that objectives are neither too easy nor too difficult okay the objectives how they should be set they should not be too easy nor too difficult but they should be such that they should be within the reach of an employee that means they should not be that much difficult and nor too easy also now students what happens when your objectives are set very easy if they are very easy to do the if things are very easy to do what happen people neglect those objectives they don't take it seriously and they think that it's so very easy i can do it any time it's very easy okay so nobody takes it seriously when it is too difficult what will happen your employee would be frustrated he will be continuously under pressure and then this would definitely affect his mental and physical health so objective should not be too easy nor too difficult but they should be challenging your individual should feel or your employee should feel that whenever i am working on these objectives my potential is being fully utilized in the organization right so that gives him a great feeling a joyous feeling to that employee because my talent my intelligence my potential whatever i have learned whatever experience i do have whatever qualification i have do have whatever i have studied up till now if that is being used practically while doing the work then nothing other than that you know an individual becomes happy while doing the work so objectives should be challenging and not too easy not too difficult then uh, after setting the objective the next uh, comes that performance review should be taken periodically to know how the how close the individuals have reached their objectives and also if there is any kind of difficulty in achieving the objective then proper guidance is to be provided and problems are to be solved now what happens when you set the objectives you leave your individual to uh, achieve that objective right within specified period of time now what happen between that for example today you have set your objective okay periodically you should keep on taking the review now periodically means it it is again uh, liberty of that management you have to decide as a manager that after one week i am supposed to take the review after uh, after uh, quarterly i'll take i'll be taking the review after one month i'll be taking the review the time period of taking review has to be decided by the manager himself right shorter the period Uh, more comfortable it would be for the both the manager and the subordinate because short uh, meetings after short period if you are meeting your boss every time and then what will happen your difficulties be, difficulties would be solved immediately right you will you will be shown a right direction by your manager now suppose today you have decided your objectives and in next 6 months you don't meet your or you don't discuss about your objectives with your boss you don't have any periodical review what will happen after 6 months your boss will ask you that whether you have achieved your objectives it's of no use you will you have forgotten everything about it what difficulties you have faced and you have stopped working on it isn't it so it's of no use so periodic reviews are very important in which you come to know that whether your employees are lagging behind they are proceeding further they are successful in achieving objectives do they have any problems in achieving objectives or are the objectives very difficult for them to achieve and do they need any reshuffling resetting of objectives anything so you can come come across what kind of problems these people are have, having and accordingly you can tackle those problems solve them prop, uh, their problems right so performance review has has to be taken periodically so that you come to know that whether your employees are working upon their objectives and they whether they are able to achieve them and uh, last is rewards are to, given to those who achieve the objective now this is very 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 important because when people do good work they have to be appreciated okay uh, so when your individuals have achieved your objectives it's your duty as a manager as a leader uh, to reward your employee 
and reward may be of any kind it depends again you are free to give a reward to your employee uh, it may be in the form of promotion if it is in the form of promotion nothing like that your employee would be very much happy to be promoted on the higher hierarchical level isn't it so he will definitely feel that this is the fruit of my hard work of achieving the objective isn't it and looking at him others would also other employees would also get the inspiration to work very hard right so reward may be in the any form as i said it may be promotion it may be cash reward it may be felicitating uh, that employee in front of all the other employees so reward may be in any form you can give reward but what about those people who have who are unable to achieve the objectives of course you are not going to punish them but you will you will give them a second chance to achieve your objectives right so here uh, here i think i have made very clear that what is ambio strategy the first thing is that you have to set your objectives let us take a review now uh, you have to set your objectives the objectives are to be set as per the ability and the capacity of an individual right and the objective should not be too difficult and too easy for individual to achieve and uh, performance review should be taken periodically and those people who achieve their objective they should be rewarded this is what we learned in today's lecture okay so with this i conclude today uh, with today's lecture thank you